Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today I wish to return to the gravitational collapse of a gaseous mass as currently proposed in the standard model for the formation of a star. We dealt previously with this topic in these videos. If you have not seen them, do have a look. The discussion continues to be important as it demonstrates that the self-gravitation of a gaseous mass is a serious violation of every thermodynamic principle. Given this reality, it is curious that the famous astrophysicist Arthur Eddington was noted for saying the following. The law that entropy always increases holds, I think, the supreme position amongst the laws of nature. If someone points out to you that your pet theory of the universe is in disagreement with Maxwell's equations, then so much the worse for Maxwell's equations. If it is found to be contradicted by observation, well, these experimentalists do bungle things sometimes. But if your theory is found to be against the second law of thermodynamics, I can give you no hope. There is nothing for it but to collapse in deepest humiliation. What is unusual about all this is that Eddington's idea about the collapse of a gaseous mass to form a star constitutes precisely such a violation of the second law. In fact, Eddington's quote is not quite accurate. It is only for an isolated system that a spontaneous process must possess a positive change in entropy. The problem for Eddington is that from a thermodynamic point of view, a gaseous nebular mass can be considered isolated if you wish to infer that it can only collapse due to the force of gravity. In fact, in thermodynamics, it is hard to imagine a more isolated system than a star forming from a remote nebula. It is easy to calculate the entropy associated with gravitational collapse. Just start with a given volume of an ideal gas and assume that its collapse spontaneously decreases the volume to half the initial value. The entropy change in this case is just equal to the following, where delta S is the change in entropy, V sub F is the final volume, V sub I is the initial volume, and R is the universal gas constant. In this case, we get a negative entropy change, which is a direct violation of the second law. Note that the result is always independent of temperature, as you can learn here. As a result, the self-compression of an ideal gas within an isolated system is not possible. Spontaneous processes in isolated systems must have a positive entropy change in order to follow the second law. But you recall from this video that Eddington also used the virial theorem to obtain this expression for the temperature of a homogeneous star. At the time, I highlighted that this constituted a first law violation. A system cannot do work upon itself and raise its own temperature. The equation also violates the rule that temperature must always be intensive. So why is this happening? Why is it that the use of the virial theorem does not work in this case? You recall that the virial theorem states that in a gravitationally bound system, the kinetic energy of the system is equal to minus one half of the potential energy. The equation works well for systems such as a planet going around the sun. However, astronomers, beginning with Eddington, have extended its use to a gravitationally collapsing gaseous mask. Why is that analysis now invalid? The easiest explanation is that a gaseous mass does not constitute a gravitationally bound system. Therefore, the application of the virial theorem to such a problem will yield only violations of thermodynamics. The first thing to recognize is that the universal law of gravitation which Eddington introduced into the virial theorem for his derivation of the temperature of a homogeneous star is not a thermodynamic expression. In fact, the universal law of gravitation was obtained by completely discounting all of thermodynamics. As a result, one cannot insert it into the virial theorem with the intent of eventually extracting the temperature of a system. Note that when we consider a planet rotating around the sun and use the virial theorem, we are not trying to extract a temperature. We are not doing thermodynamics. That is why the virial theorem can be used in that case. When a ball is raised above the earth, the universal law of gravitation provides us only with the final potential energy associated with the ball. We do not consider how the ball was raised, the engine that did the work, whether or not pulleys were used. 
what fuel was burned, at what temperature the engine was working, and how much entropy increased as the fuel was burned. The universal law of gravitation is devoid of all thermodynamics. As a result, it cannot be used to state anything about thermodynamics. Next, the astronomers are always quick to state that the stars could be treated as ideal gases. This is a central conclusion of Eddington, and one which has never been revoked. As you will note in all textbooks on stellar astrophysics, as a result, Eddington believed that he could set the kinetic energy of a star to 3 halves nkt, a result obtained from the treatment of an ideal gas. That is also not allowed. Kinetic theory says that the entire internal energy of the gas is described by the kinetic theory of motion of its particles. Eddington cannot now add a constraint based on potential energy, which was immaterial to kinetic theory and still used 3 halves nkt. Furthermore, that the internal energy of a gas is equal to 3 halves nkt is a result obtained when the gas is confined with a rigid enclosure. Enclosure is essential to defining the temperature of the gas because it is the interaction of the gas atoms which, with the walls which alone is responsible for this term. If you remove the walls, you lose the means to have pressure in kinetic theory. Eddington cannot remove the enclosure, for when he does, he removes the mechanism for defining pressure in the ideal gas law, and thereby becomes unable to define temperature itself. Even though his mathematics appear to be unaffected, if pressure is undefined in the ideal gas law, then so is temperature. In the end, it is hard for some people to understand why the gravitational collapse of a gas cannot occur, but the laws of thermodynamics and kinetic theory make the answer plain for you. If you engage in misadventures of the Eddington type, you will end up violating all the laws of thermodynamics. Physics cannot allow a gas to collapse upon itself, as a system cannot do work upon itself and raise its own temperature. Also, a gas cannot spontaneously self-compress, as this results in a second law violation. Spontaneous processes in isolated systems always display a positive change in entropy. Entropy change for a spontaneous process in an isolated system is never negative. It is not just the simple exchange of potential energy for kinetic energy, as when the ball falls to the earth. The entropy and temperature of the ball does not change as it loses potential energy. However, when astrophysics argues that a gas self-compresses, its temperature increases and its entropy decreases. The system does work on itself and as a result, a direct violation of thermodynamic principles occurs. The laws of thermodynamics are here to rule, guide, and protect scientists from error. The astronomers simply refuse to follow that guidance. They would have been well served to notice that in the laboratory, gases do not gravitationally collapse, they expand to fill the void. The situation can be no different in space. If you enjoyed the video today, promote the channel, mention the video to your local astronomy clubs, Support me with a like and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.